Hello all, in this video we are going to discuss about 50 must know questioners that medical researchers should be aware of. That is we are going to discuss about questioners and its purpose, their scoring system, grading and interpretation of the common questioners which are used in healthcare research. First on the list is SF36 health survey. This is used for assessing the health related quality of life and it is a self reported questionnaire. It measures individuals general health and well being across 8 health domains which is broadly divided into, into two that is physical and mental health score and then under physical we have physical functioning role of physical functioning bodily pain general health and under mental health we have vitality social functioning role emotional then mental health so under which we have separate heads this sf36 consists of eight scaled scores which are weighted sums of questioners in their sections and each scale is directly transformed into zero to hundred scale based on the assumption that each question carries equal weight the lower the score more the disability the higher the score lesser the disability and a score of 0 is equal to maximum disability and score of 100 is equivalent to no disability next on the list is WHO QOL brief for measuring the quality of life it includes 26 items each items have a 5 point Likert scale response and the respondents rate their level of agreement or satisfaction with each of this item in brief questionnaire the scores are transformed into scales which ranges between 0 to 100 and higher score indicates higher perceived quality of life. Next, we move on to the wealth index. Wealth index is a composite measure used to assess the socioeconomic status of the individuals based on their ownerships of specific assets, their access to services and their housing characteristics. It is commonly employed in social and healthcare researches, particularly in low and middle income countries. It is used to understand the disparities in economic well-being among the different population groups. It has the asset ownership which has certain assets listed are television, radio, refrigerator, car, bicycle or land and housing characteristics based on the type of flooring, roofing, access to the utilities and access to the service, main focus on healthcare and education. The advantages of this wealth index is there is no monetary data required. It has a good applicability in resource limited settings and we can use it for population level analysis. The wealth index does not rely on the collection on the monetary income data which is usually sensitive and challenging to obtain. So it has handles only assets and hence we don't need any monetary data for calculation of wealth index. And second is the applicability of the resource limited settings. The traditional methods of socioeconomic status classifications may be less feasible in resource limited settings where we can apply this wealth index. We can use it for population level analysis and identification of disparities in economic well-being across different segments of the population. And the limitations of this wealth index is the subjectivity in scoring that is the scoring of assets and their components can be subject there may be cultural variations which may influence perceived economic value of certain items and the dynamic nature of the questionnaire. The wealth index may not capture changes in the economic status over time as it is based on the snapshot of assets and characteristics at a specific point of time. And the last limitation is the generalization. The wealth index may not accurately capture individual or household wealth in all contexts and findings should be interpreted cautiously. The next on the list is patient health questionnaire. This is intended to assess the level level of depression. So it asks about the frequency of specific depressive symptoms over the past two weeks and the responses will be between 0 to 3 indicating the presence of the symptoms with 0 being not at all, 1 being several days in the last two weeks and 2 being more than half the days in the last two weeks and 3 being nearly every day in the last two weeks. So the scores will be summed to obtain a total score and the higher the scores indicate the higher severity of depressive symptoms. The PHQ-9 which is used for depression can be categorized into the following with minimal, mild, moderate, moderately severe and severe depression based on the scores and 0 to 27 will be the range of scores possible for PHQ-9 which is used for measuring the severity of depression. The next on the list is GAD or Generalized Anxiety Disorder 7 questionnaire. Again, again similar to the patient health questionnaire used for depression, here the scoring remains the same that is 0 to 3 with not at all several days more than 
half the days nearly every day in the past two weeks this is similar but the number of items there it was 9 here it is only 7 so the maximum score will be 21 and the minimum score will be 0 so higher the score is the higher the level of anxiety so 0 to 4 minimal anxiety mild anxiety moderate anxiety and severe anxiety are the categories out of this GAD or generalized anxiety disorder used for assessing the level of or severity of anxiety the next on the list is the Rosenberg self-esteem scale it consists of 10 statements five of which are positively worded and five are negatively worded and respondents may have an Likert scale agreement based on the strongly agree agree disagree and strongly disagree so we have negative and positive responses so based on that we score this Rosenberg self-esteem scale and reverse coding is applied to negative worded items scores obtained will be between 0 to 30 so 30 indicates higher self-esteem the next on the list is Pittsburgh sleep quality index this questionnaire measures the quality of sleep based on the seven key domains that is the subjective sleep quality sleep latency sleep duration habitual sleep efficiency sleep disturbances use of sleep medication and daytime dysfunction scored for the past one week and hence based on the frequencies we have scores between 0 to 3 and we have seven questions in that so the scores will be ranging between 0 to 21 21 being the poor sleep quality and zero being the best sleep quality so pittsburgh sleep quality scale has seven important questions on sleep quality next we move on to the epworth sleepiness scale this scale consists of eight different situations for which each situation the individual is asked to rate their likelihood of dosing of on a scale of 0 to 3 so this measures the daytime sleepiness with 0 indicating no chance of dosing and 3 indicates high chance of dosing so the individual scores of each situations are then summed up to obtain total epworth sleepiness score which ranges between 0 to 24 as it has eight different situations into maximum of three score which will yield 24 24 means higher level of daytime sleepiness next on the list is mini mental state examination which is used for measuring the cognitive function it has a maximum score of 30 out of which orientation has 10 points registration has 3 points attention and calculation has 5 points recall has 3 points language has 8 points visual spatial skills have 1 point based on that we score the individuals and higher the score the cognitive function is very good and the lower the score the cognitive function using this mini mental state examination is low so how to categorize this mmsc for cognition is if the scores are between 0 to 9 that is very low it indicates severe cognitive impairment and 10 to 23 moderate cognitive impairment 24 to 26 mild cognitive impairment and 27 to 30 it is called as normal cognitive function according to mini mental state examination next on the list is timed up and go test for this you need to prepare certain aspects that is you need to use a standard chair with seat height of approximately 17 inches place a mark on the floor 3 meters away from the chair make sure that the person is wearing their regular footwear and is using any assistive device they typically use you need to give this following instructions that is the person should sit back in the chair and on the command of go to stand up walk at the comfortable and safe pace to the mark on the floor turn around and return to the chair and sit down and you should measure the timing use a stopwatch to measure the time taken from the moment the person starts to rise from the chair until they are seated again the scoring is as follows a shorter time indicates better mobility and functional ability generally a time of 10 seconds or less is considered normal 11 to 20 seconds may suggest a mild impairment and over 20 seconds indicate moderate to severe impairment this is timed up and go test next we move on to the Kessler psychological distress scale or K10 scale it is widely used self-reported questionnaire designed to measure psychological distress in individuals here we have 10 questions with the frequency of the events getting scored so lowest being 1 and highest being 5 so hence the lowest score possible will be 10 and the highest score possible will be 50 so the low score indicates low psychological distress and the moderate scores that is between 20 to 24 suggest a moderate level of psychological distress and the high level of psychological distress is scored between 25 to 29 above 30 up to 50 suggest a very high level of psychological distress so this 
this kessler psychological distress scale k10 is used for measuring psychological distress next we move on to the big big five personality inventory questionnaire it involves a series of questions for each of the five personality traits each question is designed to assess an individual's level of specific trait openness conscientiousness extraversion agreeableness neuroticism also known as emotional instability so the big five in personality inventory questionnaire has 10 question and based on that the personality will be classified next we move on to the resilience scale developed by Wagnild and Young so it consists of 25 items of questionnaire for measuring the resilience it typically consists of statements that individuals rate based on their agreement or disagreement the items cover various aspects of resilience including personal competence acceptance of self and life and the ability to adapt to change and grow from experiences participants typically rate their agreement with each on the Likert scale example strongly agree agree neutral disagree and strongly disagree the scores are then summed to provide an overall measure of resilience and this resilience case was de developed by Wagnild and Young brief cope that is coping orientation to problems experienced this is used to assess the coping up mechanism for the stress and challenging situations brief cope is widely used self-reported questionnaire which was developed by Charles S. et al. It is derived from the original COPE inventory and it is shorter version that focuses on 14 different coping strategies which is mentioned here. So we have problem based coping, emotion focused coping and avoidant coping. Next on the list is emotional intelligence scale proposed by Schutt et al. It is a self-reported questionnaire designed to measure the emotional intelligence. The scale assesses an individual's ability to recognize understand and regulate their own emotions as well as the ability to perceive and respond to the emotions of others so we have 27 items with 1 to 5 scale like a questionnaire this 27 questions can be grouped under grouped under five domains such as perception of emotion in self perception of emotion in others managing own emotions managing others emotion utilization of emotion so all contributes to the emotional intelligence scale by Schutt et al. Next, we move on to Perceived Stress Scale or PSS which typically consists of 10 items that assess the degree to which the situations in one's life are appraised as stressful. So, the respondents are asked to rate how often they have felt a certain way during the past month on a Likert scale ranging between 0 to 4 that is never to very often. The items are designed to capture aspects of unpredictability, lack of control and perceived overload. So, the scores derived after the summing the responses with high total scores indicate high perceived stress 0 to 13 indicate low stress 14 to 26 indicates moderate stress 27 to 40 indicates high perceived stress next on the list is parenting styles and dimensions questionnaire psdq this questionnaire typically consists of two parts one for the mothers and one for the fathers respondents rate how characteristic each of the 30 items is of their own parenting style the PSDQ includes three primary parenting styles based on Baumring's framework that is authoritarian style, authoritative style and permissive style. In authoritarian style, we have high demands and low responsiveness. The parents tend to be strict, enforce rules with little room for negotiation and may not be very emotionally responsive. Authoritative style where high demands and high responsiveness will be there. Authoritative parents set clear expectations but also provide warm support and open communication and hence they are responsive to their children's need and encourage independence. The third and last style is the permissive style which is characterized by low demands and high responsiveness. Permissive parents are lenient, have few rules and may be indulgent or over responsive to their children's desires. Next on the list is emotional coercion by Cohen. Emotional coercion questionnaire consists of 60 items. The respondents rate their level of agreement on a Likert scale. It covers cognitive empathy that is the ability to understand others emotions and affective empathy that is the ability to share and respond to others emotions. The responses are then scored to generate an overall empathy quotient. Higher scores of EQ suggest higher levels 
of empathy while lower scores may indicate challenges or differences in empathic abilities so this is the likert scale and these are the different conditions of emotions categorized into cognitive and affective empathy next on the list is dass depression anxiety and stress scale 21 is a self reported questionnaire designed to measure the severity of depression anxiety and stress it consists of three sub scales corresponding to one of the psychological constructs depression anxiety and stress there are seven items in each sub scale which makes the overall questions into 21 the respondents are asked to rate the extent to which they have experienced the certain symptoms over the past week on a likert scale zero means did not apply to me three means apply to me very much or most of the times to obtain an overall assessment of psychological distress the scores from each sub scale must be summed and higher the scores indicates higher level of depression anxiety and stress next we move on to the smartphone addiction scale by kwan kim cho and yang this smartphone addiction scale or sci scale is a self reported questionnaire used to assess the level of smartphone addiction or problematic smartphone usage and the domains in this questionnaire are daily life disturbances positive anticipation withdrawal cyber relational comfort overuse virtual reality respondents typically rate the extent based on the likert scale with the responses ranging between strongly disagree to strongly agree the scores are then aggregated to provide an overall measure of smartphone addiction next on the list is morris keys medication adherence scale mmas it is otherwise called as mmas 8 adherence questions we have eight questions for this whereas the first seven questions assesses the specific aspects of medication adherence forgetfulness carelessness stopping medication with the likert scale yes or no or never seldom or often the item 8 assesses the degree of difficulty patients experiencing in taking their medication so the mmas is scored based on the patient's response to the items each item is assigned a score and the total score provided an overall measurement of medication adherence so the scores range between 0 to 8 because it is yes or no with the higher scores indicating better adherence and the lower score indicating poorer adherence next on the list is medication adherence rating scale or mars scale it consists of 10 item questionnaire with the higher score indicating better adherence with yes no responses the strengths of this questionnaire is a self report measure it evaluates both attitudes about the medication and actual medication taking behavior the weakness of this scale is it requires some interpretation yes response does not necessarily indicate a positive attitude or behavior the second weakness is that the, the total score is weakly correlated with the adherence next on the list is brief medication questionnaire bmq this is used to assess the patient's adherence to medication regimens and explore their beliefs and attitudes towards medication it consists of two parts that is the adherence section and the second one beliefs about the medicines the adherence section assesses the aspects such as missed doses frequency of missed doses intentional non adherence that is it assesses the medication taking behavior with the responses being yes or no or likert scale on the other hand this beliefs about medicine section consists of two sub scales that is necessity concerns differential and general overuse based on that the adherence scores are graded with this brief medication questionnaire then next on the list is eq 5d or euro qol 5 dimension it is used to measure the health state profile of the population or individual it consists of five important domains that is mobility self care unusual activities pain and discomfort anxiety and depression so the respondents response will be based on a three level likert scale with no problems some problems and extreme problems the combination of responses across the five dimensions create the unique health profile so based on this they have this eq 5d instrument for assessing the health state of the individuals next we move on to the international physical activity questionnaire ipaq short form ipaq short form is a self administered questionnaire that gathers information about individuals physical activity in the last 7 days it includes three specific types of activity that is physical activity at work physical activity 
in transport and recreational physical activity work includes the activities related to job such as walking or standing during transport such as walking or cycling during recreational physical activity sports fitness recreational activities can be considered so the responses help categorize individuals into different levels of physical activity such as low moderate and high based on this ipaq short the ipaq long is a 27 item self reported measure of physical activity used for individuals between 15 to 69 years old as compared to three domains in ipaq short ipaq long has five domains that is job related transportation housework house maintenance tenants and caring for family recreation sports and leisure time time spent sitting so house activity and time spent on sitting as new domains into this long form so based on this physical activity will be assessed next on the list is phagus tom test for nicotine dependence it is used to assess the nicotine dependence or addiction of individuals for smoking each response is assigned a score the total score is calculated by adding up the individual items the total score can range from 0 to 10 with higher score indicate higher level of nicotine dependence and lower score that is 0 to 2 indicates low dependence and this categorization is as low moderate high and very high dependence next on the list is odd it or alcohol use disorder identification test it is a screening tool for alcohol use disorders with three domains designed to identify individuals with harmful or hazardous pattern of usage of alcohol it is developed by who the three domains are alcohol consumption alcohol dependence hazardous alcohol use or harmful alcohol use each question is scored on a scale between 0 to 4 with total score ranges between 0 to 40 this is a 10 item questionnaire so the higher the score more likely that individual has an alcohol use disorder so these are the 10 questions with the lowest score being 0 and the highest score being 40 0 to 7 indicates low risk of alcohol use 8 to 15 indicates moderate risk of alcohol use indicating hazardous or harmful use 16 to 19 high risk 20 and above likely alcohol dependence that is the interpretation of this audit next we move on to the dermatology life quality of index or dlqi it is used to measure the impact of skin diseases and conditions on person's quality of life it consists of 10 questions covering different domains of life. each question is scored between 0 to 3 like it score higher score indicates greater impact on patient's quality total possible scores will be 0 to 30 and these are all the questions and this is the like it score possible and this will yield the maximum score of 30 and the minimum score of 0 next on the list is cats adl or activities of daily living questionnaire it is used to assess the individual's ability to perform basic activities necessary for independent living and the activities considered in this questionnaire are bathing dressing toileting transferring continence feeding so based on that we have 1 point for independence and 0 point for dependence and the 6 point indicates the client is highly independent and 0 point indicates the client is very dependent which requires assistance and for independent can perform the activity without any assistance next on the list is oral health impact profile 14 ohip 14 consists of 14 items representing domains of oral health related quality of life with likert scale responses from never to very often the questionnaire covers various aspects of oral health impact functioning limitations physical pain psychological discomfort physical disability psychological disability social disability and handicap so higher the scores indicate greater negative impact on the well being so that is oral health impact profile 14 next on the list is stop bank questionnaire for obstructive sleep apnea syndrome the stop bank questionnaire consists of snoring tiredness o stands for observed pressure b stands for bmi a stands for age n stands for neck circumference g stands for gender so stop is here bang is here so bmi more than 35 age older than 50 neck size which is measured around the adam's apple 17 inch or more in case of male 16 inch or more in case of female and gender being male all can give you a score for this eight questions the scores will be ranging 
ranging between 0 to 8. 0 to 2 indicates low risk for obstructive sleep apnea and 3 to 4 intermediate risk, 5 to 8 high risk. Next, we move on to the Modified Medical Research Council Dyspnea Scale or MMRC Dyspnea Scale. This is simple and widely used tool to assess the impact of dyspnea on a person's <coughs> daily life. It is commonly employed in individuals with respiratory conditions such as COPD and other lung disorders. It most accurately reflects the current level of dyspnea. The higher the grade, more significant the impact of dyspnea on daily activities. So we have five grades, grade 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Next on the list is COPD assessment test or CAT. The CAT questionnaire consists of this eight items that covers COPD related health status which includes symptoms and its impact on daily life. Each of the item can give a maximum Likert score of 5 and a minimum Likert scale of 0. So the score ranges between 0 to 40. Higher the score indicates higher impact of COPD on individual's health. So the 8 questions focuses on cough, phlegm, chest tightness, breathlessness, activity limitation at home, confidence leaving home, sleep, energy. So the total score will be here. So that is the CAT or COPD assessment test for the COPD related symptoms and its impact on daily life. Then next on the list is asthma related quality of life questionnaire. It is a self-administered questionnaire designed to assess the impact of asthma on individuals quality of life. This is a 42 item questionnaire under these four domains that is symptoms, activity limitation, emotional function, environmental stimuli. So each item is scored on a 7 point scale with higher scores indicating better quality of life. The scores from all items in each domain are averaged to calculate the domain scores and overall score is obtained by averaging the scores across all domains. Next on the list is National Eye Institute Visual Functioning Questionnaire or NEI VFQ Questionnaire. It is a self-reported questionnaire used to assess the impact of vision problems on an individual's overall visual functioning and quality of life. For each domain, the respondents answers a series of questions related to experiences and difficulties. The responses are scored to generate domain scores and an overall composite can be calculated to provide measures of an individual's visual functioning and quality. This is a 25 item visual functions questionnaire. So the subscale is based on these parameters. Next on the list is polycystic ovary syndrome questionnaire. This is the questionnaire. It is a self-reported questionnaire for the assessment of health related quality of life in individuals with polycystic ovary syndrome. It focuses on the following domains such as emotional function, body hair, weight, infertility concerns and menstrual problems. The patients will be giving response on a Likert scale and the impact of PCOS and quality of life will be measured. So higher scores may indicate greater negative impact. Next on the list is the DREAM that is Dunday Ready Education Environment Measure. It assesses the educational environment in health professions education, particularly in medical and dental schools. It assesses five domains that is students perception on learning, student perception of teachers, students academic self perception, students perception of atmosphere, students social self perception. So this is a 50 item questionnaire and the domains will be mixed with the minimum score being zero and the maximum score being 200 on the Likert scale course it will yield very poor to excellent learning environment that is dream or Dundee ready education environment measure next on the list is SOFAS or social and occupational functioning assessment scale it is a numerical scale used by mental health professionals to rate an individual's social and occupational functioning the SOFAS provide a global assessment of how well an individual is functioning in various areas of life including social relationships and occupational or school performance. The scale is continuum ranging between 1 to 100 with higher scores indicating better functioning. The specific criteria for scoring on SOFAS include individuals ability to engage in activities such as works, relationships, self-care and leisure. Next on the list is Ossestry Disability Index. It is used to assess the level of disability and functional impairment among individuals with low back pain. Consist of 10 sections addressing different aspects of daily living with each section individuals are asked to choose a statement that best describes their level of disability. So the responses will be graded between 0 to 5. So the 10 questions can yield minimum of 0 score and maximum of 50 score. The interpretation of the questionnaire will be with no mild, moderate, severe and complete disability. That is ODA for assessment of disability and functional impairment of individuals with low back pain. The neck disability index. It is used as a self-reporting questionnaire to assess the 
impact of neck pain on the person's daily living and quality of life. It assesses the various domains such as pain intensity, personal care, lifting, reading, headaches, concentration, work, driving, sleeping, recreation. It is similar to the Overstre Disability Index for low back pain. The responses will be graded like this and the points interpretation will be no mild, moderate, severe and complete disability. Next on the list is Coos or Knee Injury and Osteoarthritis Outcome Score. It is a self-administered questionnaire used to assess the impact of knee injury and knee osteoarthritis on a patient's health-related quality of life. It has the following domains such as pain, symptoms, functions in daily living, functions in sports and recreation, knee-related quality of life. Again, it has Likert scale with none, mild, moderate, severe and extreme. So, based on that, the overall scores will be obtained. Next on the list is foot and ankle outcome score that is FAOS. It is again a self administrated question used to assess the patient's outcomes on the foot and ankle health. Similar to the COOS that is knee outcome and osteoarthritis score, FAOS also has pain, symptoms, activities of daily living, sports and recreation, quality of life as its domain. It also has the Likert score and based on the Likert score on this question, scores will be obtained. Next on the list is hip disability and osteoarthritis outcome that is HOSS. It is self-administered for patient reported outcomes on hip health. Similar to the previous outcome scores, it also has a Likert scale ranging between 0 to 4. Higher the scores indicates worse outcomes and again the questions are grouped under the following domains such as pain, symptoms, activities of daily life, sports and recreation, quality of life. Next on the list is the numerical rating scale or NRS. It is also a self-reported measure to rate the pain intensity on a numerical scale between 0 to 10. Where 0 indicates no pain and 10 indicates the worst the pain imaginable. The advantages of this numerical scale is it is numeric, self-reported, it measures the pain quantitatively, it is very quick and simple to administer. So this is the pain scale ranging between 0 to 10 numerical scale where 0 being no pain and 10 being worst possible pain. A modified version of this is the visual analog scale which has the facial expressions of pain. Next on the list is faces pain scale. There will be set of faces, disc Descriptors will be below, patient instruction will be there, pouring and interpretation will be there and adaptations for different ages are also possible. So this is the faces pain rating scale, how the face appears based on that we can score and it ranges between 0 to 5. We also have brief pain inventory or BPI which assesses the impact of pain on various aspects of daily life. It assesses the general activity, mood, walking ability, normal walk, relations with others, sleep, enjoyment of life, overall quality of life. So each each item is scored from 0 to 10 with higher scores indicates greater interference of pain into the daily aspects of life. This BPA includes two main components that is pain severity scale and pain interference scale. Pain severity scale we will measure the pain based on the patient's intensity of their pain over the past 24 hours as worst, least and average pain and pain right now. Each item is scored 0 to 10. Next on the list is nasal obstruction symptom evaluation or no scale. Designed to assess the severity of nasal obstruction symptoms and its impact on person's daily life. The no scale consists of five questions on different aspects of nasal obstruction. Each question is scored between 0 to 4 with 0 indicating no problem and 4 indicating severe problem. Next on the list is sino nasal outcome S yes, not 22. This has 22 item questions grouped under rhinological symptoms, ear or bar facial symptoms, sleep quality, cognitive symptoms, psychological dysfunction, social dysfunction. All are categorized based on Likert scale from 0 to 5 with 0 indicating no problem and 5 indicating most severe problem. The scores from each item are summed up into total score. Higher score indicates more severe symptoms and greater impact on the quality of life. Next on the list is the mini nutritional assessment or MNA. It is used to assess the nutritional status of older adults. For this we have four domains that is anthropometric measurements, BMI and midarm circumference are used for this as a objective indicators of body composition and muscle mass. The next domain is the global assessment that is the individual's lifestyle, medication and mobility and some aspects on independence, cognitive function and overall well-being will be assessed. Then the next domain is the dietary assessment where the number of meals consumed, food and fluid intake and changes in dietary habits both objective and self-reported are collected. Then the last domain here is self-perceived health and nutrition where the, the subjective parameters are assessed. So these are all the four domains of MNA or mini nutritional assessment. So the scores
course will be categorized as less than 17 indicate malnourished and 17 to 23.5 indicates moderate risk of malnutrition and 24 to 30 indicates no evidence of malnutrition. So that is mini nutritional assessment. So these are the some of the common scales which I have collected for this presentation and most of these questionnaires are freely available in website for download. You can apply the same questionnaires in your own research. All the best for your research. I might have missed some other most important or commonly used questionnaires in the healthcare research. If you feel any other questionnaire is missed out which is most favorite of yours, you can mention the questionnaire in the comment section and if you like this video, please click on the like button and share it to your friends. Thanks for watching this video.